Okay, welcome to 44 on 1. I'm G. Bizzle. This is Tempest. Mm. I'm going to derail this a little bit because we're going to, we're finally jumping on the Tate bandwagon today. <laughs> but just pardon my freaky chair. So this situation happened just this morning. I saw it while I was eating my breakfast this morning, and I'm curious about your thoughts on it. Okay. So I'm changing the name to protect the innocent. <laughs> so Jack, Jack mm. makes a video kind of shit talking women mm. for not being a, more appreciative of grand gestures. Okay. Jill is one of many response videos. Jill's response video is pretty much telling him like a grand gesture doesn't make up for consistent ignoring of chores, right? Like you planned a date night, good for you. You made her favorite dinner, good for you. Who's making dinner the rest of the week? Probably her. So get over yourself. It was just one date. Since this, that's more detail than you than you needed about the situation. But since then, Jill has been getting a bunch of DMs from people saying, talking about how Jack has treated them, like experiences with Jack and how he's kind of a terrible person. So now Jill put out like a friends only post this morning to be like, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, do I have to expose him? Do I ignore, like, what, what is the... She's like, I don't know what to do. I have all this information now. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. And then she's asking for advice, right? Like what people think. So I'm curious about what your thoughts are in that situation. Does she have any sort of obligation to expose this person? Um, let, let, let me just get some of the facts straight in my mind a sec. So this Jill woman who created the TikTok video, is Jack her bloke? And was she having the nice gestures done to her? No. Okay. He made this video. Oh. Kind of, it started with like, yeah, he started it. He made the first video saying like, mm. women are never happy. This guy did this. He planned a date night. He made dinner. And then other women are saying it's the bare minimum. And other women in the comments are like, yeah, like it's a slightly more than the bare minimum, but making a meal doesn't, doesn't bring make any you any special care. privileges. Exactly. So Jill made a response to him, essentially saying the same thing. Mm. Now, in response to her, because she's a big creator, she started getting these DMs from people being like, oh yeah, he's treated me poorly. He, I don't, I can't remember if there were allegations of, of assault or anything, but it was just like, he tries to come off as like a super nice guy and he's a nice guy instead of an actual nice guy. Yeah, so yeah. does Jill have any obligation to do anything with this? They are not connected. They don't know each other in real life. She's never met him in real life. She just has now these stories. Okay, so uh, a bloke, uh they did something a grand gesture for his partner and she was like well this is nice but what the fuck and then jack has heard about this and he's done a tiktok about it yeah and then jill has done a tiktok in response to that basically summarizing what a lot of women are saying yeah and then and then so jack's getting all butthurt about it and then people are messing jill about jack so jack he made the okay you make a video <laughs> you make a video being like why are I, I saw this video women are complaining about this dude like why are they complaining he did this grand gesture how come you're ever happy i come into the comments and i'm like well a grand gesture is nice but you made me dinner friday night i made you dinner saturday through thursday like it's not that grand of a gesture it's not that big of a deal so in response to my video amy and anna and beth and mary are sending me dms to be like uh don't don't worry about jack because he's a bit of a douche canoe this is what he or don't worry about you because you're a bit of a douche canoe and this is how you've behaved and how you've treated people and what you've done so you don't know mm. that these dms are happening i know that they're coming into me so i know what you are like as a <laughs> real person whereas mm -hmm. you don't know that that cat has been left out of the bag right okay so i would say to um to jill that at the end of the day, these are all unverified statements from people who she doesn't know and who claim to know Jack, but may or may not actually know Jack. There's no evidence that any of these things take place. So you have to take it all with a pinch of salt. And like, obviously, naturally, in a conversation, you believe people are what they're saying, but that doesn't make it actionable. It Because all you're going to do is add, you're going to, like, if you go off and run with that, that means then you're taking a huge responsibility on your shoulders because, you know. And that's the thing, right? Like, it's, let's pretend they're all true because they're all coming from different people. So even if 30% of them are, are bullshit, 70% of them are presumably true. Does she now, I mean, 
I kind of feel like it's unfair that people, and I guess there may have been some people just sharing a story, like, here's what I want to tell you. If anyone shared the story with the expectation that she would then run with it, then that's unfair to put onto her, making it like, I'm going to absolve myself of any sort of accountability of dealing with any backlash I'm going to get and put it onto your shoulders. So like, in my head, I'm kind of like, do shitty people need to be exposed? I'm still kind of not, I'm still kind of on the fence about that because you're allowed to be a shitty person, right? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You're allowed to be garbage. But is it someone completely unrelated to the situation who needs to expose that person? Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's not, not like her. her it's not her responsibility and ethically i would say it's it's morally wrong to do it because there's nobody coming to you with voice messages or pictures or whatever of this or videotape of it's course. all hearsay like I, I the attitude i take with it is how would it play in court and if it's a bunch of oh um it's the court of public opinion that's the court exactly. we're dealing with so if I'm like, oh, so if Anna and Beth and all these other, and Lauren and blah, 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 have all told me this thing, slightly different stories, but it's all about Jack being shitty. I I don't think I should then go and tell the world about that because it's like, well, why are they telling me this? Why aren't they telling people about it publicly on their platform? That's why what are I they... think as well, right? Like, I kind yeah. of feel like they should be encouraged if they want to share that story, share that story, but it's your story to share. It's yeah. not someone else's okay i was yeah. curious about your thoughts and now i know even though it took us a while to get there <laughs> so tate tate has been banned yeah from a everything. lot of mini tates have been popping up out of the woodwork because of that because of vacuum this is why um just going on to the banning thing first i like my misogynists and my racists right where i can see them and i want them <laughs> that's fair you know what that's yeah fair. yeah i want them in public i i think there's free freedom of speech for a reason it's so that people like the reason why i have freedom of speech is so that people can have consequences for their bad beliefs and their bad actions right and so having somebody like tate in the public eye means that everybody gathers around him and then you can see like oh that's where the dickheads are located don't go over there i can walk down this alley instead <laughs> So then wouldn't him being banned be that consequence? No, because it should be in different ways. Because if you ban him, that means that it's like um, all the rats leave, fly. They fly away and they go make their own nests elsewhere. Um, and now, like you say, with all these mini Tates coming out, there's a power vacuum for wankers. So now that Tate's gone, they're all going to vie for supremacy now. And and then they'll eventually get banned, but then you're driving them underground because Tate just can't use um, social media, but people can still access him. The same thing with Alex Jones. Alex Jones still had his own website. He still has his own following, you know? So it's, all you're doing is driving it underground where we can't fucking see it. And then we- It was more insidious when you can't see it. Exactly, exactly. Um, And so I think banning isn't the correct consequence. But then if he's not if he's not banned, you have to seek him out, right? And if you don't know who he is, then you won't know to seek him out. But when he wasn't banned, he was everywhere. So he would just pop up on your feed. You'd stumble across him even if you didn't want to. So it could have had that that intended or unintended consequence of like weaponizing some kids already. But I, I think the, the the problem with the reason why I think that happens is because modern society these days as a rule isn't very ethical um so the reason why tate got as big as he did is because everybody wants to milk him for content so you have but he set that up right like that was his whole scheme was like take my videos yeah. repost no, it, but put it them out there. no i'm not talking about the people on his side the people are against him so like the newspapers oh. report about him uh podcasts have him on just as a spectacle like to point and laugh and people gave him a platform beyond what he could ever have got himself. There's a difference between what misogyny actually means it, it, as a term and what people think it means right now and how it presents. I would but Should I, we define that for before I don't we know. move forward? I don't know. It's, it's, very, it's, it's very difficult because I think people get the wrong idea because, like, I would say he's a male chauvinist. And in my opinion, that is way worse than being a misogynist. Uh, He doesn't hate women. He loves women. But he sees men as superior beings in 
certain areas of life and he sees that being a woman is a very specific thing that he wants it to be and women shouldn't leave that little box that he's assigned them a high value woman is a woman who is ride or die that's what the mm. whole thing's about since the dawn of time a high value woman is this me and you are walking down the street together some guy tries to take your handbag i smash him in the face i get i catch a murder charge because i punch like that right and, and, and this is a real, this is a true story. And she stays with you. And she's in the jail cell. She's there seeing me every weekend Period. for seven years. She ain't touching another dude. Period. Let me tell you something. Most of what most most of what you girls are talking about. I'm horny. I'll go fuck this guy. Blah blah. This shit. Why am I gonna catch a murder charge for a chick who's gonna go fuck another guy while I'm in a jail cell to protect her life? Mm. I ain't doing that. If I'm with a chick. It's for real. So a high value woman is a woman who will stick around during this like crazily hypothetical situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the thing is, he says like, is a woman's ride or die. And it's been that way since the dawn of time. And like, that is hugely simplistic and not at all how it's ever worked. Um, there is something really interesting though, as a bit of an aside that kind of, it, it, it it kind of this is the kind of thing he would try to say that he thinks supports his statement, but it it won't, it doesn't. And this uh, um when people got sent to the gulags, so Solzhenitsyn wrote about this in Gulag Archipelago, that um if the man got sent to the gulag, their wives would follow them. But if the wife got sent to the gulag, the man didn't follow them. Um yeah, and then people take that to like so he takes that as like, oh well, they those bitches be right or die or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's, that wasn't the case at all. And it's, I don't know, it, it's just such a specific mm. scenario that I'm pretty sure is the opening sequence to the Nicolas Cage movie Con Air. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah, that is it. Yeah, yeah. I do understand that he is a kickboxer, but like if someone steals the purse and starts running, you're not going to catch a murder charge, assault at best. <laughs> <laughs> But but it's it's also like why would you want to do that for a purse? It's a bit hyper aggressive. I, I don't th I don't think it's the purse. I think it comes back down to that like hyper ego of like mm. I need to like yeah I need to, I need to <laughs> like, defend my woman down to that right. Like at the end of the day, it's just a purse. There's nothing mm. in that purse that can't be replaced. The only thing that yeah. can be is him being able to tell the story afterward of like mm. I beat his ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, this is the thing is like it whenever he talks about things like violence and things like that it's always around something material how about like he never talks about like if somebody attacked my girl he never says that no so in which case it would be warranted that you stepped in with physical defense and you actually fought to protect somebody who might not necessarily be able to protect themselves in that moment but i feel like everything he I think like he's worked so hard just to acquire that material yeah. wealth. So you hold on to that wealth. Like my grandmother was kind of the same way. Not that she had material wealth, but like when my grandmother would talk about her grandchildren, she would say, I like my grandkids. <laughs> I like my grandkids. But then when she like moved in with my mom, she had to get rid of some of her stuff. And she <laughs> like, I love my sofa. And I had to leave my <laughs> sofa. She cried for a sofa and used the word love for yeah. a sofa. So for her grandchildren, she's like, yeah, they're all right. I like yeah. <laughs> So I think for him, he kind of gives me vibes. And I know you don't want to go down this like petty name calling road, but he kind of <laughs> gives me the type of vibes of like, of that kid who was bullied in school. And mm. so he tried whatever it took to become big. So he can like mm. one up his bullies. So I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to have more stuff. And that way, when I see you at the reunion, I could be like, look, look at what I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it just, it feels like it's not for him. It's mm. for external validation. Like well, because I think everything that's... is just a showcase of like, look at me on this boat with a cigar and look at mm. me with this famous person. Like it's not internal gratification. I, I think that's fair because, um, because that, that doesn't come under name calling because you're kind of de trying to deconstruct his personality. Uh, but like, it'll come up in other clips that like, he comes across as a, like a little boy trying to show how big and tough and strong he is. And it's it's this hyper masculinity that he's showing, which is like, look how big and tough and strong and rich I am. Yeah, and it's like, like you said, I wouldn't be able to do it, and I did yeah, it. And yeah, in yeah. your face, like it's, wait, it which feels it, very in your face. Wait, which if he if he wasn't doing it in the way that he's doing it, it would be 
like if he was humble about it, it would be to be admired. Like, yeah, you have done well. You have achieved a lot in your life. You are a multimillionaire. But the way he turns it into like a 12 year old school ground thing. And the way he turns it on, like, it's not even about here's how you establish this wealth for yourself, right? Like, here's what I did to become wealthy. And here's what I did to acquire all these things. It's like, now that I'm here, I'm going to get all these like bitches and hoes. And like, this is how they need to treat me. He's lost lost his, whatever his intent was. It feels like he's strayed from that because maybe teaching people to be chauvinists was mm. more lucrative than teaching people like, oh, you actually have to work hard if you want to achieve yeah. something. Or not everyone's going to become a kickboxer. Well, his um, listening to some of his his like little monologues and stuff, it seems to be very much based around, uh, this is what I think makes you a high value human being. And if you don't have these specific things, you're a loser. And, and he says, he's like, you know, anybody can achieve this, but if you don't do it for whatever reason, no matter what the reason is, if you don't do it, you're a loser. Mm. And like you're a failure if you can't get there, and it's like you know, it, and then this 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 idea that these that a lot of um, these scam artists have of when they're trying to sell their products is if you don't get there, then that's your problem. You fucked up. Basically, what he's doing is is like he sounds like there's a lot of times where it sounds like he makes sense, but then if he as as he carries on his thought process, you're like, oh no, this is where the wackiness comes in. <laughs> so like. <laughs> So he'll say he'll start off talking about well, personal... even a broken clock is right twice a day. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Even Alex Jones was right about the, the frogs being turned gay, but his thousand other things are wrong. Um, so basically, it's like he, he says that, um, you know, he talks a lot about personal responsibility, which is good. You need personal responsibility. You need to be aware of your own actions. But then he conflates it with all the other stuff we've just talked about. And then, like, you're a loser. If something happens out of your control and you can't help it, then you're just a he fucking has... loser. <laughs> but then he's his definition of high-value person is not everybody else's Exactly. Definition. He can't see outside that some people define exactly. high value in very different ways. But also, yeah. if he wants to talk about personal accountability and personal responsibility, then is he being held to account for these... Mm. this generation of young young men that he has like weaponized against women and he has exactly like he needs to be held accountable for all all the little minions that he has running around on tiktok and youtube and twitter just debasing women because they think that's what andrew tate would want them to do yeah and then like it because the thing is is like if you want to get a mate like you have to act a certain way in society and none of that is acting like andrew t <laughs> no <laughs> no if you want to draw a high value person then yeah. you need to be a high value person whatever yeah. that definition is for you you can't yeah. just expect like i think his value is really how he defines it for himself anyway just all sounds very monetary like i have mm. this big house and these cars and i can pay for your dinner and i can pay for your meals so that's why you need to appreciate because mm. I will bring the finances to the table, but not the emotion or the support or the compassion mm. or the empathy or anything else. Yeah. Well, because in one of his things, he's talking about how women should fucking clean unprompted. <laughs> and then it, and it then took it, me, it took me like 37 minutes to watch that eight minute clip because every time <laughs> I, started, <laughs> I started, I needed to like pause it. Just like, it's funny because like it, it was the perfect example. Uh, then we'll watch a bit of the clip in a minute. Um, but like, it's a perfect example, really, of what we were just talking about, because he starts off like his basic premise is sound that in a relationship, in any relationship, whether your work colleagues, husband and wife, husband and husband, whatever, there has to be reciprocity in a relationship and you have to help each other out. That's the basic premise. But then he strips all of that meaning away and goes, so women should fucking clean because that's their job because I bring the money in and I'm a multimillionaire and I've got the Bugatti. <laughs> and I'm going to drive you to dinner and I'm going to pay for your steak and I'm going to dip the yeah. gas that it took to get there. So if you come to my house and you see something on a floor, first of all, I'll pay for my own steak. You pay for a housekeeper. If that's yeah, yeah. your concern. Yeah, yeah. It's, but... like, it's like he considers that reciprocity to be servitude. Yeah. Like it because I've paid. It's all like I. I, <laughs> I feel like he's got this like little fire safe full of like passports that he's yeah, yeah. Captive. yeah. Because like it's just there's no reciprocity. He's not looking for a, an emotional support. He's not looking for an equal in a relationship. He's looking mm. for 
a subservient, someone who is mm. going to just follow him around and pick mm. up after him and make him look good. Yeah, which is where the yeah, this is where the male chauvinism comes in, isn't it? Because the the woman is an, an accessory who has a very def predefined role. I mean, there is something to be said for looking for somebody that fits your values in life and all of that stuff. But 90% of us, I would say, aren't looking for a, a tool to put on our arm to make us look good. <laughs> but also, is the type of woman he is physically attracted to mm. going to be the type who, when asked, be like, yeah, I told I'm going to clean your house. Like, for sure. Mm. No, those women <laughs> spend a lot of time and effort looking mm. like the way they do and spending all mm. the time on themselves not to be following you around yeah. with a dustpan picking up after you. Like, it's just, yeah. it's not, it's not that connection. Yeah, like, because um, one of the things that he said that did make sense is that just having money isn't going to make you uh, attractive to those women that, that in his circles. He said, because in his group, everybody's rich. So you've got to compete in other ways. If you've all got money, the women don't care about money because in their world, men have money. So then what, what is he bringing to the table under the, uh, except this male chauvinism? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like, I'm like, okay, so okay I'm... yeah, you've got the money. What else? Because there's not yeah. a lot of personality to back it up. I'm like, mm. I can't. I think it's an act. <laughs> like, oh. I think there may be some of it. Like, he may believe this much of it, but mm. like when he was on uh, with Kajitsky and Segura, yeah, as he was talking, like I was paying attention to his face, and like he's mm. kind of let his guard down a little bit because it wasn't his podcast, and like he would say things. And then you could see like the tiniest smirk. Yeah, yeah. Come across yeah, his face. It. Yeah. Where like I kind of felt in watching that one because it was one of the last ones that I watched that I was like, this is all bullshit. Like, which makes <laughs> it even worse almost is that he's amping up this nastiness just to make money. Which in my like, I would almost rather he be that much of a cunt than he just yeah. pretend to be that. <laughs> well, that's the money. thing is like he's. I, I I think some of it he does believe. And some of it, he half believes and amplifies it. And some of it, he does just for show. Um, and I, I think that that's where the irresponsibility comes in. Because mm. he's he, he isn't trying to help these young men. Like, he's just trying to sound cool for them. It's like the cool kid at school who does things for a laugh or just to look edgy. Yeah. You know, and then, and then it's, he's doing that to get the kudos from them. And it's all about just everything, but it's just this constant stroking of ego. Like when mm. he, I kind of thought it was an act and maybe there was like a decent nugget of human being in him until mm. he did that Twitter mm. where he was essentially asking or telling that man, mm. if you want, like, I have the money to save your son, but you Oh gotta, yeah, like, yeah, you got to ask me, yeah. And mm. that was just like, oh no, like this isn't like, <laughs> if, if it started off as an act that he... Mm enhanced or really dug into mm -hmm. then i think it's he's become such a good actor that it's become who he is now and he's like more into it he's the daniel day lewis of uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of male chauvinism he, he method acted his way into it. I, women should clean up not only should women clean up women should clean up unprompted oh. and i'm going to tell you why here we go it's yeah. very, very simple oh. we live in a world where things need to be fair 50 50 gender equality blah blah I pay for things unprompted. You don't have to ask me to pay for shit. If we go for dinner, I'll get my wallet out, pay at the end. Don't even check the price of the bill. My card always works. Oh, oh shit. Damn. Okay, damn. So I, I think that's... That right there is just that meat, that retail thing, isn't it? It's material thing that, you know, I'll pay for it. And it's like, there's nothing else. And then he brings up the, like, my card always works. Like, again, it's yeah. very show-offy, but it's not, that's still not making it 50-50, right? 50-50 mm. would be you pay this time, I pay next time, you clean this mm. time, I pay next time. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, or we split the bill. Like, there's not that. Or, or there's, the other thing is, is that he only seems to bring the card to the relationship. It seems to be the onus on the woman, if you'd bring in all the other stuff he said in, in other things as well, that... The onus is on the woman to provide all of these things in his life, but he just brings the money in the card. Yeah. And, and like, as if that that's all being a good man is, is just bringing the card. Well, I mean, he talks about that a lot, that he has to, as a man, it's a provider and a protector. Like, those are the, yeah. his two big rules. But it's like, you're providing for, for a, a gender who can provide for themselves. Yeah. Right? Like, 
we, we can work now. We're allowed to do Yeah, yeah, allowed you're allowed to, out of the house now. We're allowed to own real estate and have credit mm. cards. So we can provide for ourselves. And and you're talking about protection. You're like, who are you protecting us against? Other men mm. like you, right? Like, yeah, yeah. And like, it's, it's just this vicious circle. I, I think that probably sums the clip up itself, actually. I'm not sure we have to watch much more of that clip. <laughs> so I think <laughs> well, that sums when, up. And he does talk. Uh, he does talk about it in that, like, women need to to clean up and women need to do this. But it's it's very transactional, right? Yeah. Like, and it's also this expectation of of that reciprocity. Like, if you were, if I'm taking somebody out for dinner, I'm not mm. doing so with the expectation that I'm going to get anything back in return. Yeah. I'm taking them out for dinner because I want to take them out for dinner because I mm. want their company. Yeah. And you could even refer to it as like, I mean, if it's going to be a transaction, that's the transaction. If you're paying for, if I'm paying for someone's meal, what I get in return is the company of that person. Not that I'm going to bring them to my house and just sit back and expect them to like pick up it. <laughs> if I'm bringing someone back, to, I mean, I'm married. So if I'm bringing somebody back to my house afterwards, it's not with the <laughs> expectation that they're going to empty my dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And just that transactional that's not reciprocity. That's a do, transaction. Do you know, that's a business. That's a business situation. Do you know who does things in a transactional manner? Who conducts hookers. relationships? Well, yeah, hookers. Prostitutes. But also, psychopaths, narcissists, and sex offenders. Really? Yeah, they live in a transactional world. Um, and this is this is my problem ultimately with his his whole philosophy. Is a lot of it is material wealth and transactional, and there's because. I think if if you have more of an ethical foundation for why you do things, then you're going to do stuff just because you want to. And then, and you're not going to keep a scorecard of like, yeah, well, I took you out for dinner last time, it's your turn this time. You just let things happen as they do. Like you even can... in that video, he, he brings up the gas. Like the yeah, gas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Everything is like, I wonder if it even in his mind is like the spritz of cologne that he used to get that, mm. that cost money. Like it's just, there's nothing done for just the sake of doing it and just yeah. wanting to be with that person and like what can you do for me here's what i'm doing for you yeah. i saw something really funny on tiktok um that there's this woman who uh said like you know if men want these transactional relationships she said then maybe we should give them an invoice at the end of it at the end of the relationship um for like basically you've got to break down how much time you gave them and how much effort you put in blah 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 and then you can charge them so many thousands of dollars at the end for, for... well it goes back to what we talked about before right like that guy yeah. made this big deal made a tiktok shit talking women because mm. they didn't appreciate this it was a date night essentially this guy planned mm. a date night yeah. but like why is that is what you're doing to get that date night is that she's made dinner six other nights of the week that you just mm. made the one, right? Like, yeah, you drew her a bath. That mm. was the thing that like he drew a bubble bath for her, put oils in it. You didn't walk barefoot to the neighboring <laughs> village with a bucket and then yeah, yeah. warm it over an open fire. You turn a fucking knot, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like there wasn't like this grand gesture is. That's not a grand gesture either. No, he made a meal, he drew a bubble bath, no. and then he did this, like, slideshow or whatever. It's a date. He planned a date. Yeah, that's not a grand gesture. That's just a normal, exactly. a normal but, like, thing. It's that thought process of, like, well, I did this, and, like, she should yeah. appreciate it and do more for me. But then at the end of the day, like, if that guy was to get that invoice, he'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah. one dinner, one bath, and then she would be like, sit. Even at the end of the week, six dinners, loads yeah. of laundry, loads yeah, of yeah. dishes. And, well, the, and the other thing is, is that what a lot of these people talk about is uh, women's youth and, um, you know, bearing children and all that stuff. So part of what this woman was saying in a TikTok is, you know, charge them like you, you've given your best time, your youth to them. And if it's so valuable to them, then they should fucking pay for it. <laughs> That's true, because there was another TikTok I saw, this guy was going on about how, like, women who are, like, playing around in your 20s and 30s, by the time you want to settle down, your best years are gone, so you're going to get trash men, because you're <laughs> now a trash woman, and it's like... What? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> like, we're more than just a decade and a half of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Work. If you kind of view women in terms of just um, just their looks, their biology and what they can give you in terms of being your fucking mother, then, you know, you can't expect many people to want to be with you because most women don't want that. 
Exactly. And that's, I mean, women fought really hard to get away from that, yeah. to be seen as equals and treated as equals. And like men, for some reason, think that that means like, oh, then you should be able to take a punch. It's like, no, let's... no, that's not how it works. <laughs> if women are equals, I should be able yeah. to hit a woman. Like what it means is like, mm. if you are going to do or say a thing mm. that you wouldn't say to a man, then just don't do those say that thing to a woman, right? Like that's yeah, yeah. the one thing that women want is like, I don't want to be treated especially i don't want to be treated differently if you are going to say something in front of a man then you can say that in front of me if you're not going to put your hand on the lower back of a guy as you scooch him into the elevator don't do that to me. yeah <laughs> don't yeah. do that to me if you're not going to tell a guy that he shouldn't you know, he should settle down when he's 22 because he's got to mm. give his best to his partner then fine say the same thing to me but it's just like those double standards and that yeah i don't think women are actually seen as people mm -hmm. a lot of men just see women as props or as fun like just serving a functional purpose right either yeah. you look good or you're cooking and cleaning my house and making babies for me like there's no yeah it's like we're npcs right like mm. when we're not when men aren't around we just kind of stand around like the character yeah yeah like, <laughs> like a gta 5 character <laughs> glitched out <laughs> and that's the thing like because um like a lot of these blokes as well saying, oh, women shouldn't sleep around in their 20s. They should fucking settle down. But I guarantee every single one of them, if a woman like actually for some reason offered them sex one day, they would fucking jump at the chance. Of course. They wouldn't be like, like a no, kid you, need in save, a candy shop. you need to save your virtue. And then there was yeah. one guy who was like, I don't want a woman who sleeps around because that means she won't be loyal to me. She doesn't know you. Exactly. When she's meeting all these other like you're not in her life so she's yeah. supposed to hold on so she can be loyal to some mythical guy that she's never met before yeah. and may not even like that is that's the most balmiest thing as well because um there's you know there's being sexually like active and enjoying it and it's not like like you're not sleeping around with loads of people while you've got a husband you know you're doing it while you're single and then you can do whatever the fuck you want nobody owns you you're not chattel anymore you know and it, oh. It's fucking nuts. That is probably one of the ones that annoys me the most is just that double standard with women that sleep around. Um, yeah, and like just the the misinformation too of like mm. no understanding of anatomy. It's like when mm. it's like when back in the day when they invented trains, they didn't want women to ride <laughs> trains because they thought their uteruses were gonna fall out, right? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. that men don't know. Like they they honestly believe that like oh if you sleep with a hundred men. Mm. Your vagina is never going to be the yeah. same again versus if you sleep with one man a hundred times. Like, it's still the same thing. And, like, babies yeah. come out of it. Have you ever seen a baby's fucking head? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it, I was going to say, it depends on the dimensions of what you're putting up there and how frequently you put it up there. That's what the that's what makes it bigger. <laughs> but ke Kegels exist, right? Like, there's... Mm. And even... It's not like all vaginas are made equally, just like mm. it's not like all penises are made equally. There, are, How much of men not wanting a woman who has has had multiple sexual partners really isn't about the woman is more about like oh then maybe i won't measure up she'll be comparing me to other people That's she'll be like, it, yeah. like how much of that is an insecurity that if she doesn't know better then she mm. won't know yeah, yeah that's totally part of it um because that does make evolutionary sense that a man would think that way because part of it is the hard wiring where you want your genes to survive you know unconsciously you don't want you don't want to raise someone else's kids and so if a woman's been sleeping around, it triggers something in the men's brain. But my argument is, fucking get over it. That's an evolutionary holdover. We have the wherewithal now to overcome that and use some fucking logic in your life and just rise above that. It's easy we to just, do. I don't think we, I don't know that we ever will, right? It's kind of like, mm. like racism and homophobia. Mm. Like all those things are still going to be perpetuated by the people who still hold on to those, mm. to those things. Like we're at a point where we know enough about that men and women are, you know, we're the same species. We, we know mm. that there's nothing really different other than our reproductive organs, but we're still being treated like in a lot of places as second-class citizens. There are still countries mm. where a woman's virginity is prized. Yeah. And if she's not a virgin, she's considered broken and that she's never going to, like, like yeah. that is still going to be perpetuated. And there's, it's, it's not even evolutionary holdover. It's still now, like where <laughs> there are still female circumcisions taking place. And yeah, like, it's, but, that, it's but just, those things like, it, the thing is, is like culture still has to progress and continue progressing. And you just got to like, you just 
as a society just to push past those traditions because they do die out eventually it hasn't always been there that's the thing it's it's very much a modern thing mainly since like the 1700s uh, uh, around about then like because some of it was because gender roles was based on technology and all that sort of thing but even within our defined gender roles before the 1700s there was a lot of cultures that um would celebrate both sexes for what mm. they do um i mean like the scandinavians they had shield maidens that would fight in battle um and um and then the women also controlled religion in the celtic traditions and in um and again in the scandinavian traditions uh the women were in charge of the society basically so it's very much particularly since the victorian era the victorian era did a huge disservice to women and it really brought them back uh you know they also really separate i mean taking it off for like the women they also was like that's where classism really became yeah. Like, if you had curly hair as a peasant, that was seen as, like, trashy. But if you were yeah. rich and had curly hair, it was like, oh, fancy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like they really started to separate the classes and mm. women at that time. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, so, like, this whole, like, subservience of women hasn't always been there. Um, I, I do feel like it's a bit of a blip that we're trying to, like, part of, part of the problem is how we did have to find gender roles. And then the Victorians made everything just weird. Uh, it's the best way to put it. And then as technologies opened up the gender roles, um, we're having trouble integrating everything because we've got some, like, I guess, just old conservative traditional values yeah. that I think have served their purpose because, like, for going back to Tate, like, so he talks about, you know, having to fight and protect your woman and all that stuff, to use his language, you've got to protect your bitch. And, like, he... Like like you said, who are you protecting them from? And it's like, we have technology now. Like, men don't have to protect women because, like, a woman could buy a gun in most countries. She can protect herself. You can yeah. train a woman in martial arts now because we have more equal societies. Women are allowed to learn martial arts now. Women can go to university to, uh, and then they can earn a lot of money and support themselves. You but there's still so many men, like, even in, in videos that I've made, like, the uh. men still come up in the comments like, well, have you dug a ditch? Have you done this? Mm. Have you done that? It's like, but... Not you like, personally, but women fucking have. <laughs> but women do, right? Like women mm. work in those fields, not to the yeah. same numbers as men do, but they do. Just like if women were to disappear, there were mm. a, there would be a lot of underserved, yeah. underserved or underrepresented uh, mm. industries that were underrepresented by men. Mm. We'd figure it out, right? But like, yeah. and Tate. So now that Tate's gone, there have been mm. a couple of other men who popped up, like the one specifically talking about how women shouldn't have boundaries because boundaries mm. are a male thing, and like yeah. it's very much. Not even about, it's like, it's so fragile, the egos mm. of the, these men, because it's not even about women in that, like, I don't even think it's about women at that point. It's about, like, if a woman has boundaries, it makes me feel like less of a man. Mm. Like, it's just this fear of feeling less than. And he's externalizing it on everybody else. Absolutely, right? And, like, to say that women who have boundaries, like, don't date a woman who has boundaries, it's like, yeah, you need to find yourself someone who's just going to let you treat them like shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Have any sort of self-worth or self-value. Like, there's that. But what's more disturbing to me is the women mm. who jump on as these like men's rights activists it's like mm. you advocate for things that are lost and men have not mm. lost any rights and like they just jump in and be like here's why here's hearing a woman say here's why women need to clean up and here's why women need to be it's just throwing us all mm. throwing us all backward it's so disappointing yeah, yeah it, it's and it's the way that like he these guys assume that all women are like that when the planet's so diverse. I mean, look at how many different cultures we've got on it. And then like, even within Canada or the UK, how many cultures we have within that country. And actually we should watch this clip that he's got here where he's uh, bigging up Islam, even though he doesn't lead a very Islamic life. And just for okay. people to know, I've read the Quran twice. I know a fair bit about Islam and um, he is not a very Islamic person. It's quite funny seeing, the kind of things he talks about when he's trying to big up Islam. Islam fixes a lot of the problems that men are car currently facing. Yeah. The problems we're discussing on this show, yeah. Islam fi fixes all of them, mm. right? That's the first thing about Islam. And I'm not a Muslim, right? If I had to choose a religion, I would, because I live in an Orthodox Christian country, I go to the Orthodox Christian church. I donate $20,000 a month to the church in the country okay. I live in. The church, yeah. the church in Romania is very powerful. And I
Okay, so I just want to point out the first thing there. He's talking about how much money he supposedly donates to the church. Okay? Yes. That is probably one of the most un-Islamic things that you can do is talk about your charitable donations. Yes. Yeah, in the Quran, it specifically states that you should give freely. They have the zakat every year that you give freely. And, um, and you're not supposed to talk about it. You know, but even in the Christian, I mean, he says he goes to a Christian church and the Christian mm. has, you know, about tithing and giving, again, giving charity, but also mm. about humility. And, exactly. And, yeah, yeah. And doing good works because you're doing good works, not for what you get in return. Exactly. And then he's sitting here like supposedly claiming he has, but we don't know for sure. We can't verify it. Um, and he says the church of Romania is very powerful and he likes having church friends. So he's not giving for the poor. He's not giving alms to the poor. No, he's no, donating again, it's money. No, again, the transaction. Yeah. It's that transaction. Yeah, which is not Islamic. So no, he's talking about Christian. how Islam... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's talking about how Islam fixes all the problems, yet he's talking in a very un-Islamic way. But he also doesn't talk about what problems. Like, what problems are men facing that Islam yeah. fixes? Oh, I, get, I think this is supposed... Like, the this podcast that he's on it's that one where um uh, he's been on it a few times and they talk about you know alpha males and high value oh. men high value women and trying to find a high value mate and all that stuff and dating and red pills and all that stuff okay. yeah i like having church friends so mm -hmm. i give them a lot of money right mm -hmm. so i guess i'm an orthodox christian but if i had to bet on one religion as if i were betting on the stock market for the future you have to bet on Islam mm. the, because Muslims are intolerant and I'm not, and I'm not saying that disrespectfully because if you're tolerant of everything, then you stand for nothing. Yeah. Now I would quite disagree with that. I, I, again, it says in the Quran that um, if they're people of the book, just accept them for the way they are. Um, if people don't believe in Islam, then you just let them be. It's quite libertarian in that sense. Like you don't like force your religion. Mohammed was quite progressive in his views towards women. Like he, yeah. his his wives had held a lot of esteem. Yeah. And he's, okay, so I'm hearing, I see the, the caption that says, Christians are so tolerant right now. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think he's talking about, um, basically he's slagging off the progressive churches who are accepting LGBTQ lifestyles. Thanks. Christians are so tolerant now. You don't believe it. They have gay pastors that are, I'm not even anti-gay. But if the book says don't have, like, what? The yeah. Okay, so I have a huge problem with this. The book doesn't say, none of the books say you can't have gay people. No. You know what the books do say? Pay mm. your taxes. The Christian yeah. Bible references taxes a lot. And yeah. churches aren't paying taxes. Mm -hmm. is exactly. a, a lot of a lot of christian big christian mouthpieces have been taken down because they're not paying their taxes yeah and in the states they, they they're get following tax the, they're following the bits and parts of the books that yeah. fuel their fires yeah yeah and you can totally have a gay pastor there's nothing wrong with that jesus christ and it's um and then like the i think the i can't remember if it's the quran or the bible but the wording specifically is do not lie with a man as if he were a woman, right? Mm -hmm. That is so open to interpretation, and that is not anti-gay. Yeah, what yeah. do you believe in now? Right, yeah, right if, you're now. if you're tolerant of everything, you stand for nothing. Um, I can walk- That doesn't make any sense. Nah, let's not watch the rest of that, because he basically just goes on like that the whole fucking time. But uh, that doesn't even make any sense. Like, you can- no. Like, I, don't, I don't even understand where he's going with that. If you're tolerant yeah. of everything, you stand for nothing. You, you stand for tolerance. <laughs> It's part of, it is one of those, sentence. it's one of those things that like because he of the way he delivers it it sounds like it should mean something so everybody's sitting there nodding their head yeah yeah because he's, he's very emphatic he's very mm. confident in his delivery yeah. right like this is something that i used to train people about like if you know you kind of fake it till you feel it right like yeah. if someone gives you direction somewhere that are absolutely 100 percent right but they don't sound confident you're not going to believe in the directions that they gave you but if they mm. give you directions to somewhere completely made up but they mm. sound like they know what they're talking about you're going to follow those directions yeah yeah and he exactly. has he's an engaging mm. and mm. powerful speaker so people mm. fall in line and they listen even though like and he says things, he, he repeats a lot of things, right? So when he mm. says, when you stand 
when you're tolerant of everything, you stand for nothing. He says that like three or four times. So then people start to make that a mantra, even without yeah. knowing what the fuck it means, because it just sounds good. It sounds yeah, exactly. catchy. Like yeah. you put it on a t-shirt or something. It, it is like, there's so much of what plagues TikTok is that way of doing it. It's just these pithy, vacuous sayings that don't mean anything. It's so frustrating. And then people drop those in other, it's like people who... Yeah. They hear a sentence that sounds good, so they just use it in a context that doesn't make sense, thinking like, yeah. right? Like, it, yeah, yeah, I'm clever, makes, right? <laughs> it I, makes me sound smart. And uh, what that's one of the things I'm noticing in a lot of comment sections in is that people regurgitate a lot of Jordan Peterson and Andrew Tate without really knowing what it means, and I see it come up in a lot of women's comment sections a lot. Uh, with yeah. like these idiot blokes saying that stuff, yeah, and it's because like, they've glommed on to one sentence yeah. that they think yeah. is going to close up everything it's like i think like a lot of those men that came up in my comments talking about like d digging ditches and oil rigs and stuff yeah. i think they got that from jordan, Pe jordan peterson yeah, yeah i said that video. in my... like yeah, yeah. like but these men doing impossible things they're making buildings yeah. it's like yeah that's not a bomb it yeah. exists so it's totally possible and it's not yeah. like they're building the pyramids rolling stones up buildings. Yeah, yeah. Like, women work on construction sites 10 percent of the construction industry are women it's a small yeah. number but they're there but they can do impossible. the fucking job like, exactly they're able to do the job and it's not like what kills me is that when a lot of men talk about women getting into these fields it's like women have tried to break through but they get shit on every step of the way yeah. right like you see like even women in stem mm. they've had to make a big push to get women to stem because as soon as they get into those fields it, the men mm. in those fields push them out or women need to work so much harder to prove themselves yeah. even though they already know the things that everybody else in the yeah. room knows but just by their inherent fact of having mm. the biology that they do they're now considered that they don't know as much as well, their male counterparts. Yeah, there, there was a, a piece of research, okay, that um, that proved that sort of showed evidence for this, which was that they gave participants um, a is basically the same leadership profile, same uh, like executive management profile from a company, and they gave it to two different groups, and uh, they just changed the gender in each group, and um, men and women did this. If it was presented as a man, they rated him as a better manager, as a better leader than the woman, even though the profiles were the same. And both men and women did it. It's so ingrained. It's like it's mm. like when it comes down to even something as simple as makeup, right? Like if yeah. a woman, women are who wear makeup to work are seen as taking their jobs more more seriously than women who don't wear makeup to work but it's also a fine line on the type of makeup and how much mm. makeup because two makeup means that she's not taking herself or her job seriously or won't be taken seriously it's like such a fun we're like a guy just needs to get out wash his face brush his beard and yeah yeah work. exactly women are like is this too much eyeliner not enough eyeliner am i gonna be taken seriously am i not gonna be taken seriously yeah, yeah. and it's like there are whole courses that are taught and like resources for women on how to be taken seriously at work and it's not taken seriously by other women it's that you can be the most experienced person in the room but mm. still not get there because of those biases and because of all of that yeah like, yeah. It was, like i remember way back in the day a, a female leader told me like if you're in a meeting mm. and people are talking don't nod right because apparently like women have a tendency to like nod yeah and it's they're like, just they're listening and they think it's assent yeah and so but and then but men don't men just listen mm. to listen so a woman nodding is kind of interpreted instead of it being like oh she's just listening and taking it in yeah. it's like she agrees with what i'm saying so she's not going to have any opinions of her own because of that like it just takes mm. down this whole rabbit hole something similar happened to one of the students when i was doing the graduate management program yeah so she when she's listening she sits there like that and she's because she was an academic so she's there frowning when she's listening to you so one of her feedback that they gave her through the application process was don't frown yeah because people would think it's negative I sit with my arms crossed constantly yeah. because it's comfortable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've been told that, like, it looks like, oh, you're closed off and you're not listening. You're, I'm like, it's just kind of like, what do I, what do I yeah. to do? <laughs> what that is, I'll tell you what that is. That is um, pop psychology and they've read some shitty article on the internet and then now they're trying to sound clever by saying it to you and they want to belittle you at the same time. It's bollocks. And there was another one that was like, um, women in business meetings would start like, they, there's a whole course on it like women would start conversations or their thoughts with like i think i feel i believe mm. where men would just get right into it right yeah, so yeah. Would say, like i think we should do this and a man would just say we should do this yeah. so it was like this is like early in my career and they're like this is how you get taken seriously it's like don't mm. think don't feel don't believe just 
I'm gonna do it. But in reality, it's somewhere like in the it's in between, like you know. Yeah, you and can't... like listening to you know after taking going through that and like sitting in meetings with different people and mm. paying attention to like is this really a is this really mm. a thing? And it's like mm. no, women. There are just as many women who get right to the point as there are yeah. men. There are just as many men who say like I think we should or I think I feel this exactly as there are women. Like it's. It's like you sat in a room with six people. It's like that mm. Carlsberg experiment, right? Yeah, like it, yeah. was, it was an ad that they were trying to promote, yeah. but like you did this tiny little experiment and then extrapolated all this yeah, data yeah. from it. Exactly. It's fucking idiots. I Which mean, I think is like what Tate goes down to, right? It's like yeah. he's he's maybe met a couple of people who fall into this category and then mm -hmm. extrapolated that like all women are like that or all men need to be this way yeah. because it worked for him. It's yeah. it, it almost feels like superstition. Mm. Right, like when hockey players get their playoff beard, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's like he thinks if he does this, he's gonna get yeah. that. And that's the thing, though, is that like he d he doesn't know what the people around him think of him, though. Like he doesn't know what they genuinely think of him. And then I I wouldn't want to be that kind of person in my life because I, I just find his lifestyle unethical, and I don't like the ego. But wouldn't he surround himself with other people like him so they wouldn't even see outside of themselves enough to think about somebody else? Yeah, yeah. It's hard to tell because, like, when he's got, like, when he's on things, um, like that clip from the podcast earlier, is that those people on the podcast, if you listen to them, they just nod and agree the whole time, even if they don't agree with him. They're like, yeah. And then their response is always like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah, like. It's like fucking. I hell. wonder if it's because he's such an imposing figure, or because mm. they don't want to disagree. Because then mm. he'll start turning that vitriol into them. Yeah, I think. Like, they're like just if cowards. one of them were yeah. to say, "Like, no, I think you're full of shit," then like, would mm. he just double down and be like, yeah. "You're just a weak man," and you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, th I think they're just cowards, and also they don't have um, a mind of their own. A lot of these people, mm. um, they can't think for themselves. Like that's why they follow people like him. And th this yeah. is the this is the problem is because they it's like the whole uh, cult of personality. So they follow him, not what he's saying. You should listen to the ideas because if you follow ideas, they can change. They're malleable. You can change your mind about them. But you follow a personality, you start to elevate them to godhood. They can't do anything yeah. wrong, and you you take on board everything they say. But everybody says something dumb sometimes. But he's, and that's the problem is that with the people that he's doing it with, right, these young mm. men, they don't have the critical thinking skills exactly. to be able to see through that. They don't have any other examples of men to compare to. They're seeing exactly. him, and it's like a beer commercial, right? Yeah. Like, oh, if I drink this beer, I'm going to get those women. So mm. if I act this way, I'm going to get that lifestyle. Mm. Meaning, meaning, like, like, I don't know what he did to earn his money. Like, I know he's the, he's the kickboxer and MMA fighter, whatever he does. But he worked hard to get to mm. that place. And yeah. now instead of teaching you how to work hard to get there, mm. he's just throwing all this shit. Well, he, he claims to be doing that because he has like his Tate University oh, thing. His Hustler University. University. Hustler University, yeah. But like all that see, sounds to me is a scam territory. Like, it sounds like a pyramid scheme. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he doesn't care to get these people to that. I mean, because... and of course he doesn't want to get people to the level that he's at because then that's competition for him. He wants yeah. to keep you... Here. Well, because if the, the people who are real experts, what they'll do is they'll give you stuff for free to a certain extent on like social media and stuff. And yeah. then the really good stuff, then you have to pay to get access to. Yes. But that shows you that like, well, you'll get some limited success from this bit I'm telling you. Um, but then they so they do give you some of the expertise for free. They want you to have a taste of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. prove that it works, right? Like, yeah. Prove, prove but it. He doesn't do any of that. No, he just showed, well, he kind of, I think he feels that, like, seeing yeah. videos of him on a yacht with a cigar and a beautiful woman, that's yeah. all the proof you need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trust me. Do you think he'll come back? Do you think, well, yeah. this is the end of Tate? Or is he no. going <laughs> to... These people never go away. Um, I, they just, like, what I found is, is that any system in the world is gameable, and people will game the system, and then he'll just find a new way of doing it. He'll be he'll be on a different platform like Odyssey. Um, they like all the dregs end up on Odyssey, um, mm. and that they've got really relaxed rules there. Um, not that I'm against that. I mean, I think people should be able to have a voice. Um, but absolutely. But it's like you said at the beginning, right? Mm. You have that freedom of of expression, but the consequences mm. of that you're not well, free it, from the consequences of that. 
this is the thing is like if um but we'll use an example of say like uh gay birthday cakes or gay wedding cakes right because that's that's quite a big topic so it should be up to the vendor whether or not they want to serve somebody a gay wedding cake or not right uh i personally am very much pro gay marriage before anybody jumps on me for that but the reason why i think they should be allowed to refuse you is so that then you can tell everybody you are refused and then they'll lose all their business because we're supposed to live in an ethical society who will go well, i'm not going to buy fucking wedding cakes from them they don't like gay people they're bigots and then your business collapses the government doesn't need to interfere you don't need to squash anybody's freedom of speech society is supposed to be self-regulating yeah, uh, I agree. So why have women got to rely on men for resources? When we're in an era now, that doesn't need to happen anymore. Like we're literally, we've our, our technology and our culture has risen above that need now. Yeah. You know, but there are still like, there are still men who have a hard time if, they're, if their partners make more money than they do. Yeah. There are still like, <laughs> there's still a stigma against like stay-at-home dads or men mm. who, like people still call a guy staying home with the kids is babysitting instead of like, I'm just watching my kid, right? Like there's yeah, still yeah. That, that pervasive language and thought process. Yeah, it's bizarre. Um, and, it, you know, it's some of it is self-inflicted. Some of it is inflicted by others. Um, but I, I just think that, although I think it's happening too slowly, I do think change will occur. I mean, things always change. Did um, you? Yeah. I mean, we've come a long way from like, it wasn't, it, it was within my lifetime that women mm. weren't allowed to have their own bank accounts or credit cards or yeah, yeah. our own real estate. So like it's, the progress is being made. It's just. Mm. Well, it's like Coco Chanel, uh, Coco Chanel, like um, yeah. so, some family owns um, Chanel, don't they? Uh, because yeah. she couldn't, she didn't have a husband. And so she had to get a guy to help her open a bank account. And then he swindled her out of loads of money, but there's nobody else willing to do it. So yep. she had to go with Well, there deal. was a surgeon, the name is escaping me, but upon mm. his death, they realized that he had been a woman the entire time and like had lived her life as a man, not yeah. because she was really, they don't know exactly if she was transgender, but the mm. assumption is that she lived her life as a man because that was the only way she'd be able to get into medical school and take it yeah, seriously yeah. as a doctor. So yeah, so we should probably leave it open-ended. It's a topic we can revisit in the future. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, like, comment, subscribe, and all that shit. Because then yes. we can, it'll, it'll help us guide the conversation in future if people Absolutely. comment. And then, so they're going to say to us now, well, have you ever done a manual job in your life and blah, blah, blah? I have not dug ditches professionally, but I have dug shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing I always say to people, I mean, I'd sit out in that TikTok, didn't I? Like, who do you think? dug the, the trenches outside of Leningrad in World War Two, Fucking women. Yeah, like when all the men went to war, women stepped up. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have a choice. They were in the factories. And then they got a taste for what it was like. And when men got back and they were like, get back to the kitchen, they were like, uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> well, well like actually, in, in the First World War, they did get sent back to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So after the First World War, they were like, no, we don't need you anymore. Fuck off. And yeah. all those women had to lost all their independence. Exactly. That's, that's the problem. You give them a yeah. taste of freedom and they yeah. just send them back in and they're like, I like yeah. it. Yeah.